Well, a warm welcome to our campuses that are watching today. Big shout out to those in Pitt Meadows, those in Strathcona, and those that are watching in commercial, and also you're watching online. Hey, we're excited to have you with us today. This is such an important message as we talk about controlling toxic thoughts, replacing toxic thoughts with God's amazing, wholesome thoughts. So you're in the right place today. We're glad you're with us. Church family, would you give them all a real big warm welcome? We're glad to have you joining us today. If you were with us last week with Dr. Caroline Leaf, you heard her talking about walking your poodle. And if you missed that service, you really got to go back and hear what does it mean to walk your poodle. So if you missed that, I encourage you to go back and get that off the podcast because today we're going to build on that. We want to continue to renew our minds. The Bible says if you renew our minds, you can prove, live out what is a good and effective and perfect will of God. God's got a place for you. He has a purpose for you. And a lot of that is only fulfilled as we renew our mind to God's thinking. So let's get into the word for today and take a look at this. Here's a verse that we really like, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, where it says, Carefully, carefully guard your thoughts, because they are the sources of true life. Now, wouldn't you agree with that? You have to really be careful about your thoughts. Guard them carefully. They are the source of life. Your thoughts can either produce life or your thoughts can produce death. So you have to guard them. You have to be careful about what you're thinking. Now, the world will kind of say, you can just think whatever you want to think. It's up to you. But God comes along and he guides us and says, no, no, be careful what you think because that's the source of life for you. Today, we want to look at how do I control the thoughts that are toxic that I don't want to have in my mind. So the first point is, well, what is a toxic thought? Let me put up a picture of a toxic waste barrel. This is not what we want to have in our minds, some corrosive, toxic chemicals that are polluting our mind. We talk a lot about our environment. We don't want to pollute our environment. We want to keep our environment good, and we should. We care about our planet. We care about our city. But I really think before caring about our city and planet, we have to first start about caring with, about our mind. Wouldn't you agree that if we really were careful what we were thinking, it would reflect on the way we take care of the world around us, not just our environment, but also it would reflect on the way we take care of our bodies, our, our families, our, our communities. So it really does boil down with how we're thinking. And what we don't want to have is toxic, corrosive, deadly thoughts in our mind. What is toxic? What is toxicity? Well, by definition, it's there in your notes containing or being poisonous material, especially when capable of causing death or serious debilitation. A toxic chemical can do that to our environment. But likewise, a toxic thought can cause sickness, can cause you to be poisoned on the inside. God gave us a way to control toxic thoughts. We're going to review that today. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul lists some of these toxic thoughts. He said, people's desires make them give in to immoral ways, filthy thoughts. Starts with a desire, and Satan works off these desires. He'll put them in front of us, and God has given us desires, but they can be perverted. People's desires make them give in to immoral ways, filthy thoughts, shameful deeds. They worship idols, practice witchcraft, hate others, are hard to get along with, People become jealous, angry, and selfish. They're not only, they not only argue and cause trouble, but they're envious. They get drunk, carry on at wild parties, do other evil things as well. I told you before, and I'm telling you again, no one who does these things will share in the blessings of God's kingdom. The bottom line is God wants to bless us. He wants you to enjoy His blessings. But if you live in a toxic mindset, you're not going to enjoy the blessings that God has for you. He lists a number here of these different ones. So let's just review a few of them. There would be many examples of toxicity, but here's a couple examples of toxic thinking. Number one, immoral thoughts. He puts that right at the very beginning, immoral thoughts. We talked about that on our first session, and then last Friday night, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, when we interviewed her and Mac, she went into quite a bit of detail on the effect of pornography, immoral thoughts, and how toxic that is for your mind. So if you've happened to miss that one, it'll be up by Sunday night. So 
Go back, watch that thought, that uh, lesson again with Dr. Carolyn Leaf. I'm not going to expand on that. We've already covered that one. Here's another one, selfish or greedy thoughts. Now, <laughs> I think Vancouver has an issue with greed. Uh, there's a few amen here tonight. <laughs> I think there's, there's this issue of greed. You could see what's happening, whether it be in the real estate market, in the business world, or there's just this greed that comes in. And the Bible warns us about greed, about selfishness, because it can be toxic. How do you know if you're, you have that happening in your life? How do you know if you have that toxic thought there? Greed is a strong and persistent desire or craving for something you don't have. It becomes a focus of your thoughts and your desires. When greed's at work, it's more, more, more. I'm not happy with what I have. I have to have more. One of the things that Paul said, I have learned to be content. And then it's just something where I'm content. I, I don't need to have a bigger house. I don't need one more TV. I don't need the latest car. I don't need more shoes. I am content. There's just something about contentment instead of more, more, more. Greed is hurry, hurry, hurry. I've got to work harder, do more to get more. And greed will, will suck you in if you're not careful. Uh, it, it, it lends itself that way. One of the things that will tell you if you are having toxic, greedy thoughts is you begin to close your eyes and compromise. Oh, you know what? I, I can, I'll let that go. I'll let that slide because I can have more if I do this. One of our young businessmen came to me one time, and he has a flourishing business, and, and he said to me, Pastor, you know what? I need to ask you something because I'm in a place where I can make a lot more money in my business, and it's not really a lie, but it's kind of a half-truth. And, I, 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 and I, I've been in this business for quite a while. Our company's been doing this for a long time. But since I became a Christian, I'm just feeling like it's not right because our clients don't really have the whole truth. But if I say no to this, we're going to lose tens of thousands of dollars. He says, what do you think I should do? I said, well, let's stop and think about it and pray about it a bit. And I knew where we were going to go with it, but I just wanted to counsel him a bit and really make it his decision. I said, you are hearing the Holy Spirit. And he made a hard decision. He said, you know what? It's just really greed that I want to go after that. I'm going to let it go. So that's another toxic thinking is greed. And we live in a city where we have to be careful that greed doesn't get into us and cause toxicity in our lives. Another one is jealous or envious thoughts. There's a number of Proverbs that talk about envy. One verse says that envy is actually, it, it, it gets inside your bones. I don't have the exact proverb here, but it literally says it, it gets into your physical bones. Jealousy and envy can be a cause of sickness in your life. You've got to be careful for these toxic thoughts because it literally will affect your health. This is one of them, jealousy and envy. And you've got to guard it, got to catch it, arrest it. Unforgiving thoughts are toxic thoughts. And uh, have you ever replayed a conversation in your mind? Boy, if I see that person, here's what I'm going to go through. And, I'm gonna t and you, you have got the whole conversation played out in your mind before you even see them. That's a symptom of an unforgiving thought. Another symptom of this toxicity in your mind is if you keep score. If it bothers you if they get blessed, that really ticks you off that they got blessed. When you, you, have, uh, you blame the hurt that you have in your life on them. And uh, you talk behind their back. These are symptoms of this toxicity of unforgiveness getting into your life. Another one is regretful and discontented thoughts. This is toxicity. One of the fellows in our life group, he made a statement that really stuck with me. He said, regret is a recipe for despair. You know, we can look back and we all can have regrets in life. Well, if I just had been there at this time, if I just acted at that time, I wouldn't be where I am today. Folks, if we live in the past, the, the past could be a good guidepost, but it's a lousy hitching post. It's much better to look ahead and have hope and look into the future than the regret in the past. Amen? Regret can be toxicity, and as can discontentment. Here's an example of some discontented, toxic thoughts. How many could-haves, would-haves, should-have statements have you made in the past week? 
How about this? I don't like my, and you can fill in the blanks. I don't like my body. I don't like the way I look. I don't like this. I don't like my house. I don't like, I don't like. Those are discontented thoughts. Or I wish my, and you start to fill in the blanks. I wish my, I wish I was a better provider. I wish uh, my wife was like this. I wish this. I wish that. And we can move into discontentment. Or I'm not as, those are fill in the blank, toxic, discontented thoughts. Or I don't like it when, or life is so hard because, or if only, distorted thinking. Uh, or do you ever make comments like, nothing ever goes right with me, everything I touch fails, I'm always messed up. If you've answered yes to any of those, if that resonates with you, then there's some detoxing that needs to take place in your mind. Now, it makes sense in our bodies because we do detoxation or detox our bodies. We go off certain foods or we're careful what we eat. Much more so, we need to do it with our mind. Amen? Another one is critical thoughts. This is toxic thinking. Uh, critical of others, comparing ourselves to others. Uh, does it come into the church? It comes into the church. We sometimes get feedback, and, and it's, it's criticism. It's critical thoughts. And often in that criticism, there is a nugget of truth, but there are some that, you know, they just feel like they're, they're, God's gift to the world is to come and criticize. And I, I just want to help you tonight, you know, if you've come to find the mistakes at our church, and they're, they're, I could help you a lot because I've probably seen a lot more <laughs> because we've been here. And so we're not coming with a critical attitude. Some might be watching by uh, at the campus, oh, you know what, how come I have to watch on a video? You could be critical of that. You could be critical of, of the way you, you're parked, the critical of all kinds of things. You can be critical of your spouse, critical of your, of your employer, critical of your country. And so you have to be careful that the toxic thoughts of criticism don't get into our lives. So much of it is just what we choose. I'll put up a picture of a hummingbird and a vulture, and uh, it'll help you understand my next point. The point is some of this. You're going to find what you're looking for. The hummingbird... It goes and looks for something sweet, and it finds something sweet. The vulture, on the other hand, it looks for something dead and rotten. And you can show up in life and say, I'm going to find something sweet today, or I'm going to go there and I'm going to find something rotten. You can find something at your workplace that's rotten. You can go to a family gathering and find something rotten, or you can find something sweet. You can get up in your, in your city and find something beautiful or find something rotten. So you have to make a choice. Healthy thinking says, I'm going to look at what's good, what's pure, what's lovely, what's a good report. Anybody can make a bad report. You can keep a scorecard, a report card with you and live your life and find everything that's wrong with everything. i got news for you. There's not a lot of people who want to hang around you. If you want to be with somebody who finds the good in life, not the negative in life. So let's talk about what toxic thinking can do to us. Dr. Carolyn Leaf, when she was here last week, she referred to her book, Who Switched Off My Brain. Uh, it's a great read. And in that book, one of my favorite parts is she describes how our five senses are what bring in the thoughts. So five senses bring in the thoughts. We see things, we hear things, we smell things, feel things, etc. So that comes in. And then our mind, like a transmitter, sends these thoughts and they end up at a chemical plant. You have a chemical plant in your brain. And based on what you're thinking, that chemical plant secretes chemicals into your body, either good or bad, and that, that's going into your body. She writes in her book, this is what she says, the hypothalamus is like a chemical factory where the thought-building process happen and where the type and amount of chemicals released into the body are determined. The thalamus signals the hypothalamus to chemical repair response to your thoughts. The endocrine system is a collection of glands and organs that mostly produce and regulate your hormones. The hypothalamus is often referred to as the brain of the endocrine system, controlling things like thirst, hunger, body temperature, the body's response to your emotional life. The hypothalamus is a pulsating heart responding to your emotions and thought life, greatly impacting how you function emotionally and intellectually. 
This means that if you're anxious or worried about something, the hypothalamus responds to the, this anxious and worrying attitude, the flurry of stress chemicals engaging the pituitary gland, the master gland of the endocrine system. The endocrine system recreates the hormones responsible for organizing the trillions of cells in your body to deal with any impending threats. Negative thoughts shift your body's focus to protection and reduce your ability to process and think with wisdom or grow healthy thoughts. On the other hand, if you change your attitude and determine to apply God's excellent advice and not to worry, the hypothalamus will cause the secretion of chemicals that facilitate the feeling of peace. The rest of the brain will respond by secreting the correct formula of neurotransmitters for thought building and clear thinking. Although you may not be able to control your environment all the time, you can control how it affects your brain. So she goes into a little more detail there. The bottom line is this, if you think toxic thoughts, you're going to have a toxic world. But if you think godly thoughts, God thoughts, you're going to have a wholesome world. It's a truth. It's a fact. When you have negative thoughts, you have a little chemical plant, and it secretes chemicals into your body, and it affects you. If you think healthy thoughts, different chemicals are secreted. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. It is our responsibility to guard our thoughts. It's not our mom's job. It's not our dad's job, our spouse's job, our life group leader's job. Each one of us have to take responsibility and say, I will choose my thoughts carefully. God wonderfully made us. He made us for life. Like we heard last week, we are wired for love. If you put gasoline in the car, it runs great. If you put water in the car or diesel in the car that's designed for gasoline, it's going to break down. We break down if we run off toxicity, but we flourish if we run off of love. We're wired that way. In her book, she writes this, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, 75 to 95% of the illness that plague us today are a direct result of our thought life. This is proven. This, that's, isn't that sobering? That alone should be like, wait a minute. I want to choose my thoughts carefully. What we think about affects us physically and emotionally. It's an epidemic of toxic emotions. It, um, so it's very important that we choose our thoughts carefully. And she gives us a fact that uh, there's research shows that Fear on its own triggers more than 1,400 known physical and chemical responses and activates more than 30 different hormones. So, all to be said, it's important on how we think. There's a lot of different toxic thoughts we could have. Let me just put up a slide for you quickly of the different types of toxic thoughts and what the results of it. Everything from tension, fear, pain, disorder, sadness, depression, anger, all these things that come out of toxic thinking, bad attitude, phobias, foggy, confused mind, uncontrolled thoughts, bitterness, resentment, poor immune system, poor health. The case being simple, we need to watch our thoughts and control toxic thoughts. So let's get there. How can I control my toxic thoughts? What do I do? We're not a victim of our biology. God gave us hope. He designed us in such a way. And so let's go to... Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. What does God have to say here about this? I'll start in verse 6. It's in your notes. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. So one of the greatest ways to control toxic thinking is by prayer, and may I add thankfulness. One of the best ways to do it when toxic thought, for example, if greed comes, I just stop and say, no, I'm thankful for this. If criticism, these thoughts, a lot of them just... If you just stop and say, here are 20 things I'm thankful for, by the time you finish thinking about 20 things you're thankful for, that toxic thought that's trying to grow in your mind will be gone. Just taking time. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, no. 20 things I'm thankful for. It may be, you may have to start, God, I'm thankful I'm alive. I'm thankful that uh, I can see with my eyes. I'm thankful my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm thankful for, I can live in Vancouver. But you just list 20 things you're thankful for. By the time you finish 20, that other thought's going to have dissipated. Prayer is so important. You bring your concerns to God. You bring your anxieties to Him. It says, cast all our cares upon Him. Our minds, our bodies weren't wired 
to carry cares, concerns, and burdens. That's why Jesus said, bring your burdens to me and learn of me. My yoke's easy. You're going to have challenges in life, but I will be with you. So don't worry. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all that He's done. Then you'll experience God's peace. We just read how physically there's a peace that comes as we think and are thankful and praying. It exceeds anything we understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. This is such an incredibly important verse when it comes to renewing our mind. Because we have to have a grid. We have to, have a, we have to inspect the thought. Does it line up? What's our standard? Here's your standard of thinking. Fix your thoughts. Hold on to it. Grab your thoughts. And know this is what I will think on. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right and pure and lovely and admirable. And, it doesn't say or and, it has to be both. It could be true, but it might not be pure. So fix your mind on these things. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's a good verse to memorize, to know right there. Uh, another one is prayer and thankfulness. Then secondly, there in your notes is inspect every thought. Now, it's kind of like going through a border. When you come through the border, you hold up your passport, and they want to inspect you. And they, they check you. Are, you. are you able to come into this country? You have to check every thought whether or not you want them to come into your country. Your mind is your country. How picky... How, how specific is the Canadian government on checking every passport of everybody who comes into our nation? Guess what? We have to be that thorough about watching every thought that comes into our mind. And if they're coming with a different agenda, if they've come with terrorism, if they've come with immorality, if they've come with greed or jealousy, these other toxic thoughts, why would we let them into our country? We give terrorists, we turn them around, put them on the plane, say, no, you get to go back home. You're not welcome in our country because we have a government in our country, and you don't fit under this government. We're taking you captive to the obedience of our government. Well, the Bible says take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Jesus Christ is the Lord over my life. And you don't fit under his government. You don't fit under his rulership. And so I am going to tell you, you have to get out of my country. You don't get to grow in my garden. No, you don't. I don't want you in my life. So I, I'm going to, yeah. Thank God he helps us on that. Look at this verse that brings us to light in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare. Would you agree that there's a battle fought in your mind. If you agree with that, just raise your hand today. I want to make sure all the campuses, you guys agree with that? Okay. For the weapons of our warfare, there's a battle in our mind. It's not carnal, but mighty in God. You can't win this fight on your own. Sheer mental horsepower is not enough. It doesn't matter what your IQ is. You will need the help of God and the Holy Spirit to win the battle in your mind. And he's given you mighty weapons to do that. Mighty God for pulling down strongholds. That word strongholds in the Greek means a prison locked by deception. And a lot of people today are not who God wants them to be or they're not doing what they could do because they're locked in a deception of lies. Somebody said something about them, you'll never amount too much. Or somebody else lied to them, might have been a coach, it might have been a parent, it might have been a teacher. Somebody lied to them, they started believing the lies and it became a stronghold in their life. I've got good news for you today. Today, and right now today, God is able to break the strongholds. Because the weapons are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. So that stronghold was built over a long period of time. It doesn't matter. God, in a moment of time, He can break down strongholds. He can remove them. Wow. Anyhow, for the pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments... What's arguing? God's not right. This is right. Don't believe that. Satan loves to argue. Did God really say? He did that with Eve. Casting down arguments. 
I'm going back to his word. I believe God's word. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now look at this point. Bringing every thought. Would you say that with me today? Bringing every thought. Every thought what? Into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I bring every person who comes into our country to the obedience of the laws of Canada. Hey, if you don't obey the laws of Canada, you're not welcome. If you don't obey the laws of Christ because that's how I choose to govern my life, you're not welcome. That's what this verse is saying. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, this takes some work. It will take... Because you have to one, you have to say, well, what are the laws of Christ? What does God's Word say? A thought will come and say, wait a minute, what does God say about that? And you go to your Bible and you look it up, okay, what does God say about that? What? And you get out your app, what's a promise? And it takes a little while to get that. I say, no. A border inspector, he may have to say as he's being trained, you go... Do we allow that in our country? Let me go here and just check. Check. Um, no, we don't allow that. Okay, no, you can't come. But after a while, he doesn't have to check the manual because he just knows it so well. And when you're first getting started, you have to go and check it and double check. Okay, no, no, that doesn't come. Instead, I choose this. Pastor Greg Rochelle, he gave a message on controlling toxic thoughts. And I love one of the illustrations he gave. He learned French when he was in school like some of us Canadians learned French when we were at school. How many, how many here learned French when in school here in Canada? Okay, now keep your hand up if you remembered everything. Okay, there's a few of you that did. I, I learned French, but boy, I have to say, it, a lot of it kind of, I didn't walk my poodles, put it that way. They just, it, it didn't stick. But he learned French, and part of it, they had a, a French student come as an exchange student. And he learned some French, and she begins to speak to him in French. And, and uh, so he, he muttered a few words in French. And, and then as she spoke to French, him in French, he took the French, interpreted into English in his mind. Then from the English, he thought of his answer, converted the English back to the French, and he spoke to French. And it was a really awkward conversation. But he said that something happened. Also, it was like a f switch was flipped and he was listening in French and speaking in French, and the conversation went really well. And there's a point, because sometimes this is very new to us to renew our mind. And as you get started, you go like, okay, wait a minute, this thought isn't right. i got to go and interpret it, see what God has to say about it. And then I react to it, and it's kind of even awkward. But I've got good news for you. The switch will flip. And also, it'll just be automatic. No, no, cast that thought down. Take a captive to the beings of Christ. That doesn't line up with God. You're a liar. You're the father of all liars. There's no truth in you. And you just, and it just rolls out of you. But that, that, it takes some time. My encouragement to you is just stay with it. One day, it'll just, it'll just flip. You think, hey, this is really changing. Yeah, but you have to walk your poodles, as we heard last week. You have to put it into practice. You can't just hear it. You have to do it. You have to... Replace those toxic thoughts with God's Word. Now, God's words are, like Jesus said, these are my sayings. And you, you have to listen and do them. Not just hear them, but do them. It's there in your notes, Luke 6, 43. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. In Matthew's account, Jesus said, you make the tree good. You make it evil. It's up to you. You have to make the tree good or bad. You have to make that choice. Then it says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. What's stored in your heart? What did you put in there? An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Don't say, Jesus is my Lord, and not do what he says. If, you, if he's your Lord, then you, then you do what he says. You say, wait a minute, I'm not thinking that way. I'm going to choose my thoughts according to God's word. He says, everyone who comes to me and hears my words puts them into practice. Then he gives the example of the house built on sand or built on stone. We don't want our house to look like something built on sand. This is a picture of of a life that heard the teaching, but they just built it on sand. They didn't do it. They just heard it. And we don't want to be this, correct? 
We want to be the person who hears God's Word and then puts it into practice. He said, that person's house is going to stand in the storms. Now, there's something interesting about this word house here. In the Greek, it's the word oikos, which means household, community. You could put the word family. God wants your family to stand. He wants your life group to stand. He wants community to stand. It's not just a physical house. It really meant family, home, community, oikos, this group of people together. What's going to make our city a better place really starts with the way we think and what we put into our heart. What's going to make your family a better family is really depending on what you put into your mind and what you allow to grow there. The way we get rid of toxic thinking is to replace it with God's Word. Say, that's not true. I'm going to be thinking on God's Word. Both of them built houses. Both of them had neighbors that said, wow, what a great house. You couldn't really see the foundation until the storm came. One of the tests of fruit is not just the words we speak. The test of fruit of what's in our life when the storms hit. This past week, I was watching an NBA basketball game. I caught just the last part of the second period, second quarter, and then came this halftime. And during the halftime, they had a memorial service for Monty Williams. He's an associate coach there at Oklahoma City. His wife had been tragically killed by another driver. And they showed him giving a eulogy at a service, at the memorial service. It was so powerful. Even the commentators, Shaq was there. He goes, wow, that man preached. It was just so powerful. But what caught my attention was this man's house was really shaken. He just lost his wife. But what came out of his mouth was a picture of a man who didn't have toxic thinking. Let me just play, play this little clip, and then we're going to come back. Our campus pastors are going to close, and I'm going to close up. So watch this clip, a picture of a man who's thinking clearly in the storms of life. And I'm evidence that God can work it out. I don't care what you're going through. This is hard for my family, but this will work out. And my wife would punch me if I were to sit up here and whine about what's going on. That doesn't take away the pain. But it will work out because God causes all things to work out. You just can't quit. You can't give in. See, the Bible says Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And America teaches us to just numb that, and it's not true, but it is true. All you got to do is look around you. Get outside of these walls, and you know it's true. This will work out. Doesn't mean it's not hard. Doesn't mean it's not painful. Doesn't mean we don't have tough times, and we're going to have tough times. What we need is the Lord. And that's what my wife tried to exhibit every single day. Now, I'm going to close with this, and I think it's the most important thing that we need to understand. Everybody's praying for me and my family, which is right. But let us not forget that there were two people in this situation. And that family needs prayer as well. And we have no ill will towards that family. In my house, we have a sign that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We cannot serve the Lord if we don't have a heart of forgiveness. That family didn't wake up wanting to hurt my wife. Life is hard. It is very hard. And that was tough. But we hold no ill will towards the Donaldson family. And we, as a group, brothers united in unity, should be praying for that family because they grieve as well. So let's not lose sight of what's important. God will work this out. My wife is in heaven. God loves us. God is love. And when we walk away from this place today, let's celebrate. Because my wife is where we all need to be. And I'm envious of that. But I got five crumb snatchers I got to deal with. <laughs> I, I love you guys for taking time out of your day to celebrate my wife. We didn't lose her. 
When you lose something, you can't find it. I know exactly where my wife is. Isn't that powerful? Now, after we went through the message, could you catch a glimpse of a, a healthy mind? There's something there wasn't toxicity. Hey, you could tell there's a man who's been renewing his mind to Christ's thoughts. There was a lady who veered over the center line and head on collision and killed his wife. But you hear him praying for that family, holding no ill will against that family. You hear a sense of come and celebrate with us. There's a sense of looking forward to heaven. I love what he said at the end. I didn't lose my wife. Because when you lose something, you don't know where to find it. But I know exactly where to find her. Some of you have lost loved ones. But you didn't really lose them. Because you know exactly where to find them. My question for you tonight is, where will you be found? Obviously, his wife Ingrid had made a personal decision to have Christ in her life. And that's what's reflected in, in the testimony here in this eulogy. He's a very influential NBA coach, and he's just boldly sharing his faith in Christ. So much so that the commentators, it kind of threw them. It was so powerful. But I want to put the question out to you tonight. Have you made a choice to ask Christ to come into your life? Because this work of controlling toxic thoughts is beyond us. And I think, yes, heaven is our home. We will be found in heaven. But more than that, I want to encourage you that during your life here, God will walk with you. This is bigger than you. We need powerful weapons to control our mind. If we want to have an untoxic life, we have to un detox our mind. And God is here to help you. But you have to invite him in. If you keep him at arm's length, he will respect that. But if you say, Lord, I will allow you to come into my life. I, I want you to work with me on my thought life. There are strongholds in my mind that I'm sick and tired of having, and I need your help to pull them down. Today can be the day you pull down strongholds. You, you allow God to disassemble patterns of thoughts that have been there for years. Why, why wouldn't you want that? Pride? Ego? You want to do it your way? If you do it your way... In about three years or a year, sometime later, you're just going to find yourself right back at the same point of decision. Because there's only one who is greater than the enemy out there, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his word. And ultimately, you have an enemy who wants to kill, steal, and destroy, like we heard reference there. But Jesus comes to give you life and life more abundantly. And we know that that life is so related to us having our thoughts in order. Like that first verse we shared, I'm going back to it. It says, carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. God wants you to have true life. So I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and uh, let's pray together. You could be here today and you've never yet invited Jesus into your heart. You've not allowed him to be there, but today you just sense I must do this. I want the peace that passes all understanding. I want to have this home in heaven that I heard from Monty Williams as he shared there. I want to confess and just acknowledge that I need help. There are strongholds. The first step is really just to admit it, I need help and cry out to Jesus. He's there for us. He's willing tonight to come into your life and to work with you. He's loving. He's patient. He's gentle. He cares about you. Like one of my friends recently had coffee, he said, it's the beautiful Jesus. The beautiful Jesus longs to cleanse you, to walk with you, never leave you, never forsake you. So let's pray together a simple prayer where you too can invite him into your heart. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, this Saturday night, I'm asking you for your help to pull down strongholds to remove toxic thinking that's gotten into my mind. I want your help to guard my mind that I could have true life. I accept what Jesus did when he died for my sins and rose again that I could have life, that I could be found in heaven. I accept you today, Jesus. Amen.